Welcome to our web development class. In this class, we will continue to learn some of the, the newer CSS3 properties. We will look at transitions, transformations, and animations. Transitions, transforms, and animations all allow some type of movement effect on the screen. The previous properties that we have been looking at are essentially static. They, are, they style the elements, but there is no real interaction with them. Some of these new CSS3 properties can actually replace things that have been traditionally accomplished using JavaScript. However, with CSS, we can only achieve effects w with a mouse hover or possibly when a page loads. The older browsers, such as Internet Explorer 9, will just ignore them, so here again, nothing is broken. Most of these properties do need the vendor prefixes, sometimes called browser prefixes, as we see here. Alright, let's look at CSS3 transitions. Transitions allow a gradual change in a CSS property as you change it from one value to another. Now, you can only use properties that have some kind of unit of measure or color value. For example, you cannot transition an Arial uh, font face into a Helvetica font face. However, you can tra transition background colors and background gradients from one to another. Here again, transitions can only be accomplished on a, ho a hover because there has to be something to trigger off the ability to call that change from one value to another. The syntax for the CSS3 transitions are very similar. To begin, you need the property that will be added to the transition, and you need the duration that the transition will occur over. So we have a time factor, and um, the time factor would be either a second or a millisecond. There are 1,000 milliseconds in a second. Optionally, you can specify a certain timing function. A timing function basically says how it starts and stops. There is a default timing function, which is ease, so that if you do not specify a timing function, that is what you will get. You can also specify a delay before the animation stops. Here again, there is no delay normally, so that would be the default would be none. All right, so we have in CSS3 several new properties that relate to overall transitions. We have the transition property, property, and that would be set to the name of the property which we'd like to transition, such as a width or a background color. The transition duration property, that would be set to a value, maybe uh, 0.5 milliseconds or 2 seconds. The transition timing function, and there are set functions that we can call. Here again, the default is ease. The transition delay, here again, that will take a, a unit of measure with respect to time. And then there is the transition shorthand, which is very convenient considering we have to use vendor prefixes for all these. And that would take the property, duration, timing, and delay, and here again, they are not comma separated. These are the various transition timing functions. Ease, which is the default, is a slow start, then fast, and a slow end. Linear would be the exact same speed from start to end. Ease in would be a slow start. Ease out would be a slow end. Ease in out, slow start and end. And you can actually make your own uh, cubic Bezier curve to define your own values. The best way to, st to actually see these functions is to um, use them at an exaggerated time, such as maybe five seconds or more, because that way you can actually see it happening. All right, so let's take an example. And there 
are two pieces to the puzzle. There, there is the CSS that is applied to the object upon which the transition will happen, and then there is the CSS applied to the hover pseudo class that is attached to that um, CSS object. All right, so let's take a look um, at our, our CSS. So here we have a container, a div, and I'm setting a width of 100 pixels, a height, a background color of red. All right, now this is where the transition is applied. It is the transition property that is applied to the um, object. And what this is saying, it's saying with 3S. And notice that we are using the W3C syntax and we're also using the shorthand. And I have the other vendor prefixes here also. So the transition property is applied to the object along with its other CSS properties. The, the, what is applied to the hover? We apply the second value to the hover. So if we're starting out with a width of 100 pixels and we want to transition that to 300 pixels, that is where the hover comes in. That is essentially the hover state. Now, we could have done this without a transition. We could have set something to a width of 100 and we could, we could call a hover on it and change our width. However, that would happen in a split second. You would not, it would be, go from one width to another just like that. What we're doing is we have a nice fine little gradiated change from one state to another by using the transition property and that is applied here again to the original object. Let's take a look at how we might use transition several properties. In my first div, I have a width of 100, height of 100, and a background color of red. And in this situation, we're going to transition our width and our background color. And that will be accomplished with the hover. So in the styles for my hover, I need to establish the new value for the width that will be transition to, and the new value for the background color that will be transition to. Now I'm using the transition shorthand, and what I need to do is I need to have comma separated both of these values. So I have width, 3s, ease in. So now I'm adding a, a timing function. Comma, background color, 3s, ease out. So you can vary your different values for the different properties in the syntax um, for the transition property. When you're transitioning multiple properties, sometimes it gets complicated use, writing all of the property names. You can just in the transition property for the syntax, you can just use the word all, provided all the other parameters are the same also. In that manner, you don't have to specify this, the specific properties. The browser will know what properties to transition based on the speed and the timing function that you have specified as values of the transition property and based on those property and values that you have set in the hover. So if those properties and new values are set in the hover, they will automatically be transitioned from the original properties and values set in the div to those set in the, in the hover using the transition speed and timing function. All right, transformations, commonly called transforms also. Technically, they are a function that takes one or more parameters. And you can set them statically. In other words, they can be set when the page loads. And they can also be called on a hover. And here again, if they're called on a hover, it's a flat instant transition from one to another. However, these properties can also be used to um, be transitioned so that you have that gradual change over a period of time. 
Now, most of these transformation uh, values are applied to the center of the object. So just keep that in mind when you're using them. All right, these are the values that the transform property takes. Here again, these are pretty much looked upon as functions. The scale value. And in the parentheses, you would need to pass it the parameters to which it will scale to. Scaling makes it larger or smaller. And it's done in um, a relative matter, not a set pixel matter. Although I believe you can do it with pixels. Translate. We're moving it to a new location. Here again, scale and translate is based on the um, center. Rotate. Rotating something around from 0 to 360 degrees. Skewing to the x and y axis and the matrix which is a combination of the above. All right, so let's take a look at the scale transformation. Now remember, this is a value. So if you look at our general W3C syntax, we have transform colon scale, and it is taking two values, 2 comma 4. They are comma separated, these two, these are. All right, 2 re refers to the x of the horizontal, y refers to the, um, 4 refers to the y or vertical. So what that's saying is it is that we're going to scale it twice whatever its horizontal value is and four times whatever its vertical value is. Here again you really want to use the vendor prefixes. Now I, I do believe IE9 does recognize um, 2D transforms but not transitions. So if you look at the um, example on the right you can see that we made the box bigger. <laughs> You also can set the individual sides differently. There is a scale X, which would take one value, and a scale Y, which will take another value. All right, you can here again, you can use scale with transition. It makes a very nice effect. So in the top of our um, CSS coding here, this is the properties that are applied to the object. So we have the transform property set to scale. So it is scaled when the page opens. That That is essentially being applied there and just the same as if you were applying a border. It doesn't need to wait for anything. It is there. However, we also have a transition property being applied. And the transition property, the value, is what? A CSS property. So we are using the transform property in our transition syntax. So when we have when the hover occurs, we will be manipulating the transform property in a half a second and we will be using the ease in out timing function. So now if we look at the code in the hover section, um, here we have transform colon scale one colon one. So when the page loads, the object is transformed using the scale function, two times the height, four, four times the width. On the hover, essentially we're scaling it back. We're scaling it back to 1-1. One, one. And you can see on the right hand side the two different screenshots for before and after. Although you can't really see the transition because this is a static PowerPoint. Okay, the translate function. And if you look at the syntax, this is a value of the transform property. And it takes two val parameters. The horizontal position and the vertical position. So what we're doing, we're moving it from its original position on the x-axis and the y-axis. Now the translate value works with the original zero, 00 position. So every object, their upper left corner, uh, forms the x, y axis, and that is zero, 00. So if we wanted to essentially move it from its original location, that technically is what translates do, is doing. It's moving it. You also can set the values separately, translate x and translate y. 
And remember, this is the transform property. Okay, we also have rotate. And this rotates it in a circular manner using degrees. And if we look at our syntax, we have the transform property and the value being set is rotate. We're passing it a value or parameter, 90 degrees. Look at how degrees is spelled, no spaces. And if you look to our diagram on the right, you can see by looking at the text inside that the object is indeed rotated 90 degrees and think of how that would be um, with respect to an XY axis. Now if you also notice I put different colored borders around my box because if if there's no text and if everything is the same it's very hard to tell which side is up and which side is down. So when you're rotating things always try to put something in there so you can actually see where you are in the rotation for um, testing purposes. Okay, SKU. And if you look to the diagram first, this is what SKU does. It adjusts the um, X and Y axis with respect to their lines. Alright, so here again the transform property and the value is SKU and it takes two values and they're not pixel values or measurement values, they are degrees. So we can skew something on its XY axis uh, based on degrees. Remember we talked about um, the starting point for some is 0, 0, but for most of them it's center from where the transforms are applied. We also have a transform origin property and that allows us to change the default origin for where that transform occurs so that we can um, set it somewhere else. So here we have um, the transform property being set to rotate and next we will changing its, its origin to 20%, 20%, so we'll be starting closer to the edge of, this, of the object um, rather than directly in the middle. I would like to use a website to demonstrate some very nice examples of our transitions and transforms. Uh, the URL is on Blackboard. So this is where we start up here at this URL and I need to, and by the way, all of the code is right here for you. This is some very interesting code. And now I'm going to look at the demo. Okay, so the first thing we, we've looked at is animating a color. And technically, let me just... The first thing we've looked at is a color transition. So here the color is gradually changing from one to another on the hover. Remember that um, we can make these things, transitions need to be a hover. The next example is the background color will be changing. And this is something that would look so nice on a um, navigation bar. We co commonly use hover effects on navigation, but here again it's just from one state to another. There's no gradual change in value. This would make a very nice effect on a navigation bar. The border radius. Now when you animate a property, that property doesn't necessarily already have to exist. Um, it can be, you can tell, you can set the, the transition in the styles for that object and then on the hover um, add, add that property and animate it. So here on the border radius it does not have one to start out with, but we do have a transition set for border radius and on the hover we actually add the border radius. So here again a nice interesting effect that you might see on a navigation bar. Alright, scale up. Here again we might not have anything, a property set initially, however we can add that on the navigation. So here on the hover it's getting a little bigger. These sometimes look very nice um, on an image possibly to make it look a, come into play a little bit bigger or also on some information that might be hard to read when the user um, hovers over links maybe it will scale up for them. 
All right, the translate and the box shadow. Here again, these properties, the box shadow is not set initially, um, but the transition for it is. And when we, on the hover, um, we add the box shadow. And um, we also are adding a translate. We're actually, actually moving our item also. The inner border is the same concept where that property is not set initially, uh, but it is added on the hover. The transition is set. And this inner border is something that we learned in the uh, chapter 6. Okay, the constant pulse. And here we have this ability to go back and forth real fast. And the underline me.